Well, hello. Good evening. It uh, is Wednesday, the 18th of December, almost a full year since the Tobacco Products Directive was per first presented to the Commission, the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers in Brussels. December the 19th last year is when it happened. And today, agreement was reached in Corepa on the text of the Tobacco Products Directive and mostly about e-cigs and that's what we're going to be covering tonight. Joining me here on VT Talk is my colleague presenter and very good friend Dave Kitson who we share a lot of screen time together don't we Dave? We do, don't we just? And we do indeed and both Dave and I have um, fairly opinionated opinions on what we're about to discuss tonight and as per usual over in the big monitor on the right hand side is the effervescent loveliness the bountalicious babe, the high priestess of vape in the first church of the e-cig of our Lord. The one and only Sav. How are you doing, Sav? You get worse. I'm fine, thank you. Good. I'm pleased to hear it. Um, we've got an awful lot to cover tonight because we're not just going to be covering what's happened with the TPD and what it means and what we need to do, but we're also going to be covering a little bit of the good stuff. Uh, that's come out over the last couple of days and what's been happening in the House of Lords. I have all of the footage available and we'll be playing that in in the third half of the show of three halves. That is VT Talk, but we'll not get there unless we make a start. So, hello, good evening and welcome to VT Talk. <laughs> Yes, indeed, it's VT Talk with Sav and Dave. And Dave, and there might be another Dave joining us later on. Um, it has been a queer week, uh, to say the very least. It has been a queer week. Rumours have been rife, but we do have the full text. And what I want to do is kind of run through what's in the text. But I'm going to go to the recitals first. And we're going to try and answer a few of the questions that have been cropping up. I know you already have some, don't you, Sav? Yes, I've got uh, four or five questions that I took earlier from Chad. Okie dokie. Well, let's, let's bearing in mind that a lot of people will see what Chris Davies had to say uh, and what the Greens have had to say. Let's look at the first of the recitals, which actually refer to what we are all quite so bothered about. And here it is. Um, this is the actual text, and it says electronic cigarettes and refill containers should be regulated within this directive unless they are due to their presentation or function subject to directive 2001-83 EC or to directive 9342 EEC diverging legislation and practices including on safety require diverging legislation Oh, yes, they've mixed that up. Uh, div diverging practices exist in member states as regards these products requiring action at union level to improve the functioning of the internal market. A high level of public health protection should be taken into account when regulating these products and blah, blah, blah. So, right, what that says, and the important part of this is, electronic cigarettes and refill containers should be regulated within this directive unless they are due to their presentation or function subject to Directive 2001-83 EC, which just happens to be the Medicinal Products Directive. In other words, after the European Parliament went to such great lengths to make sure that they wouldn't be regulated as medicines, they still can be, and it is down to individual member states as to whether or not they wish to pick that up. And Chris Davis has already said as much in his letter that came out, but he thinks that because this alternative method of regulation is available to member states, that they won't do it. Dave, have you got a take on that? Yeah. I think we've been sold out, <clears throat> is my take on that. 
it's it, it basically says, OK, we won't agree to it now. We'll agree to it without any scrutiny or any further votes in the future. That'll do. Thanks. That's that's pretty much the way I'm seeing it. Um, it gives the option for the MHRA to continue to press for medicinal regulation. Now, that's not necessarily all bad because we already know that when member states in the EU have tried to impose medicines regs on e-cigs, they have failed in the courts. However, what it does say is that the bulk of the text that we're going to be looking at tonight has been cobbled together in massive haste and without any thought, without any consultation and without due process, um, which it kind of annoys me more than somewhat. Um, perhaps though it might be better if we go back to chat and see what they've got to say about that. We'll try and cover it point by point. Sav? Regarding that, um, chat feels very similar to Dave K. Um, we've had um, uh, Whip It Up 69 says we've been well and truly screwed. So much for light touch. Sorry, couldn't think of another word for that. It just is. Uh, Andy D says we've been totally sold down the river. What if, uh, sorry, Trelento has said, so that means the MHRA are still in the mix then. Mm -hmm. And Alan Fletcher has said, if some do choose medicines and others don't, we'll just buy from the other countries that haven't chose. And what if Aitman's asked, uh, oh no, that's a different question, sorry, I'll get to that later. <laughs> okay. Um, sneaked it to me wrong list. <laughs> did it, did it indeed. Um, the, the, the first of, of the... Uh, the points in Article 18 that's in, in here actually says it as well. If, if we go back and look at that bit, it says the member states shall ensure that electronic cigarettes and refill containers are only placed on the market if they comply with the rele rele relevant provisions of this directive and with all other relevant union legislation. This directive does not apply to products that are subject to an authorisation requirement under Directive 2001-83-EC or to the requirements set out in 9342-EEC, which happens to be the uh, Medicinal Devices Directive as much as anything else. Um, so yes, we're being sold down the river on that one. And quite honestly, I think, I would hope, any rate, that if MEPs realise that that one paragraph on its own negates Amendment 170 and everything that they fought to get through, they would then, I would hope, put amendments in and stop all this nonsense. But let's... Uh, anything more you want to bring in on that one, Dave? No, I, I, just to reinforce what, you, what we were saying, you know, that, that, that this is not a compromise. It, in many ways, this could end up being worse the bloody medical regulation what we've currently got absolutely I, I, I agree go on it's kind of uh, we've got the worst of both worlds at the moment uh, as things stand uh, on things like advertising we're subject to the tobacco laws and governments could actually take it out um, of that and, and and effectively ban them by making them medicinal products anyway so, uh, you know, and I, I've got to say this, right, that watching the, the tweets last night and this morning uh, um, from people like Chris Davis claiming a victory, what planet is the guy on? It is not a bloody victory, is it? No, no. Uh, well, not if your objectives were our objectives. I don't know what the, the people who are claiming it's a victory, I don't know what their, their agendas are. Um, well, I think from from what uh, Chris Davis put out in, in emails today, um, he sees that there's been a, a victory f won, even though the ability for a member state to unilaterally decide that these are a medicines still exists. I don't see how that possibly does anything other than negate the amendment that was there, because member states... Or a fantastic analogy also on Twitter earlier. Go on. <clears throat> and apologies, I can't credit it to whoever it was because I can't remember who it was. But he said it's like being told we've banned cars, but it's okay, headlights are still legal. <laughs> That's not a bad analogy. That is not a bad analogy. Um, it, it, it's. Steering wheels, I think. It's yeah, steering wheel. Well, whatever. I mean, the. the, the, the <sighs> 
it, it, it makes a mockery of it because, as I say, a member state that was going to have a go at making the medicines still can. Member states that weren't going to have a go at making the medicines are going to be forced into uh, adopting draconian rules, draconian regulations that there would not otherwise have been. I do not see how this is a win for anybody. And indeed, as we go through all of the various different bits of this that we're going to cover, you'll see that it doesn't get any better, it only gets worse. Um, you could speculate that it could be quite a good result for the tobacco companies. Um, you could indeed speculate that it could be a very good result for the tobacco companies, and we'll see why. It's still about like uh, uh, refillables are okay so long as you can refill them without spillage. Is that ridiculous that idea still persisting? Um, it's there and we'll, we'll get to that. Um, between all the various different bits, there, there is so much in this that makes no sense. Um, let's let's plough on a little bit with it and, and get into the uh, the next little section where it says manufacturers and importers of electronic cigarettes and refill containers shall notify the products with the competent authorities of the member states in which the product is intended to be placed on the market. The notification shall be submitted in electronic form six months before the intended placing on the market for products already placed on the market on the date referred to in paragraph 1 of article 25. The notification shall be submitted within six months of that date. A new notification shall be submitted for each substantial modification of the product. Now, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you don't have to do that with cigarettes. If you modify the cigarettes, I'm pretty sure you don't have to do that. What it does mean, and we were just talking about this before we came online, um, product cycle, Dave? So the product cycle for some of the stuff that we've got from China over the last couple of years is about a day, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it, if, if you want to think uh, of, of an extreme example, I can give you two, actually. Remember the very first clearomizers, the CE2 clearomizers? Yes. Yeah. There was a new revision about one a week. Mm hmm And like the VV Nova, th there was like a daily version of that, wasn't there? There was. Uh, you know... <laughs> If you've got to wait six months for each minor innovation, each minor improvement, you, you, you kill it, don't you? Well, yes, exactly right. As I said, um, I, I do get the feeling that this might have been constructed in order to kill e-cigs without being seen to kill e-cigs. Um, because as we go through, you'll see it just gets worse and worse. Sav, what have we got from chat on that? Again, uh, they've all said the same six months things are just totally outdated by then we've gone through two or three revisions of a product in six weeks never mind six months it, it's a it's a farmer point of view isn't it it's a farmer perspective where things take years to get to market well they, I, they think six months is light touch they think six months is light regulation exactly right i mean all if they had one example just one example of a product an easy product coming to market and causing somebody harm, I'd at least pay attention. And that, that it's, it's a massively valid point. I mean, we're now talking in terms of 7 million users throughout Europe. And if anybody can point me to any material harm coming to any of those users as, di as a direct result of their use of an e-cig, please do. Um, I'm, I think I'm probably safe in saying that there's more damage caused by light bulbs throughout Europe. There's more damage and more harm comes from roller skates throughout Europe. There's more damage and more harm, in fact, from nicotine gum and nicotine patches than has ever happened with e-cigs. There is no reason for any of this at all. And my feeling is that we are dealing with people who have not researched what they need to research and need to be educated absolutely certainly that's where they need to be um anything more from chat before we go on to the next one regarding that i mean there's quite a few people in chat who are getting quite annoyed and worked up over this um that they want to move forward they want they 
they know that they're in for a, a fight now and they don't believe that people are, are naive and that this is they think this has been done deliberately not because people are uneducated and there's a lot of people that are starting to feel this way in chat okay um and you you might well you might well be right um as with everything like this i mean i'm seething angry inside about all of this and i'm i'm beginning to think that we need now to be telling our elected representatives what they ought to do and not asking them and educating them. I think we need to be taking positive action and I've got a few ideas and I want to kind of discuss them during the course of this show and it's it's actually um, informed a little bit by a video that comes later on and I know a lot of you will have watched the Lord's debate that happened today. I've got the full thing, I want to play it in in case anybody's missed it and we'll do that at the end of the show. Um, th there's all kinds of stuff here. I mean the next the next bit, let's, let's just go to it and, and try and cover as much as we can. The toxicological data regarding these ingredients and their emissions including when heated, referring in particular to their effects on health of consumers when inhaled and taking into account inter alia, any addictive uh, effect. This is the list of all the ingredients that's supposed to be in there, the name of the contact details and all the rest. Information on nicotine dosing and uptake when used under normal or reasonably foreseeable conditions. This is straight out of pharma legislation. Description of the components of the electronic cigarette, including where applicable the opening and refill mechanism of the electronic cigarette or refill containers. The description of the product production process, including series production and declaration that the production process ensures conformity with the requirements of this article. That's good manufacturing practice, straight out of medicines. Declaration that the manufacturer and importer bear full responsibility for the quality and safety of the product when placed on the market and used under normal or reasonably foreseeable conditions. Again, straight out of pharma. And where member states consider that the data are incomplete, they're entitled to request the completion of such data. And fees may be charged for receiving, storing, handling and analyse the information submitted to them. That is straight out of pharma regs absolutely straight out of pharma regs it's not consumer regulation by any stretch of the imagination it's not a bloody victory by any stretch of the imagination and we need to fight that um now here's the here's the really big kick in the nuts i don't think we need do we need to go to chat for that last bit sav no all we've got is yeah that sounds like med regs to me and andy smoked vapes just said and so was born a fully formed and more effective black market without a shadow of a doubt yes because Number three, member states shall ensure that nicotine containing liquid is only placed on the market in dedicated refill containers not exceeding a volume of 10 millilitres, disposable electronic cigarettes or in single use cartridges. The cartridges or tanks shall not exceed a volume of 2 millilitre. The rest is uh, wiped out. The liquid does not contain nicotine in excess of 20 milligrams per millilitre. The liquid does not contain additives listed in paragraph 4 of article 6. Only ingredients of high purity and free from contaminants are used in the manufacture of the liquid. Substances other than the ingredients referred to in paragraph 2b are only present in trace levels if they are technically unavoidable during manufacture. Only ingredients are used in the liquid that are not... that are not hazardous to human health in heated or unheated form with the exception of nicotine. Electronic cigarettes deliver the nicotine doses consistently. Electronic cigarettes and refill containers are child and tamper proof. Electronic cigarettes and the refill containers are protected against breakage and leakage and have a mechanism ensuring leakage free refilling. That's basically telling you what can and can't be put on the market. It's disposables, it's maybe an Aspire, but an Aspire that you cannot get a leak out of. And that's something that's going to be looked at either in two years' time or two years after implementation. We are not at this point in time sure which. This is all down to how the various different member states implement it all. But the bottom line on it is, anything above 2 mil is banned. Anything above 20 milligrams is banned and any bottle bigger than 10 mils is banned and they said there was to be no ban sav i'm sure chad's got something to say on that one before dave comes in well vape swag and an awful lot of other people have said it amounts to an outright ban 
Uh, Whip it up 69 says it's worse than regs for real cigarettes. Uh, Max Height says, yeah, you can buy 25 milligram patches, but only 20 milligrams for us. Uh-huh. And Frank Mitzkatis has said, I'm not sure. Does this now also mean refillable tanks can only have two mils or can they have more? Well, you, you see, there's the point, isn't it? The fact of the matter is that, 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 go to camera two, David, that, my scrape on the top of there, there is no way on the face of this planet can they stop those from being sold. It just cannot be done. There is no way. It's not going to happen. How are they going to police it? They don't even know what it is. Police don't know what it is. Customs don't know what it is. Who the hell knows what it is other than the people that are using it? That has a capacity of five mils. Our mod makers, the atomizer makers, are going to be able to churn all kinds of stuff out and as Andy Sutton said, smoke the vape, the black market starts here. There will be a thriving black market in higher capacity stuff. And then what's going to happen? Are we going to get arrested walking around on the street using these things if we're using something like that? I'm telling you now, I'm not going to stop. Dave, what's your take? Came up with that wording for that has this idea in their head, they must have, of a 10 mil cartridge. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in, their, in their stupidly in, ill-informed little world, it's a 10 mil cartridge, which somehow you can fill up. Uh, why bother if it's a cartridge? You might as well just buy a replacement. Mm. Really don't get it at all still. I think... Um one of one of the things that, that that I'd heard was somebody thought it would be possible to to um, to make a ten mil bottle that was pressurised. So you remember how you used to fill your your um, gas lighters? <laughs> that you would be able to get some kind of atomising device, some clearomiser or tank that you that you filled like you used to fill a gas lighter out of a pressurised tank. Funny if they weren't in such a position of power wouldn't it yeah somebody's just typed soda stream into chat exactly yeah and and it's um it, they just don't get it at all not not even one bit of it they know i th i swear they just think that this for example is just a big version of a little cartridge cigar light they i don't think they've understood that the point of this isn't just that it's big no. Um, um, in terms of the, the other thing you were saying there, that, that uh, and it, you'll have to excuse my uh, lang linguistics here because they can piss off. I'm going to carry on doing what I want, and if I have to get the stuff from elsewhere, then that's what I'm going to do. Stuff it. I don't care if they knock me up. <laughs> I'm with you on that one, Shake. I am absolutely with you on that one. They're not going to stop me. They'll not stop her. There's no way. Look, I tell you what, before everybody busts a gut, we'll take chat and then we'll go into the adverts and then we'll come back. Right, chat again. Oh, there are a lot of very, very angry people that are not going to give up the fight. They, Again, they don't believe this. Not ill-informed. They're purposefully ill-informed to allow for useless options. And they're not giving up. They want to fight this. And a lot of people have echoed exactly what Dave Case just said there. Good, good. That, I have to say, is what I like to hear. Um, and I've got some ideas that I want to throw past everybody, run past everybody and see what they think. Um, but we'll do that in the second half. Um, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
Weber and I Weber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC games. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-Alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. And we are back in the room. There's, I want to hit one more little bit before we go anywhere. But Sav, there was something came through. Yeah, um, I'm getting a lot of stuff coming through. A lot of uh, private messages and um, messages coming through in chat about where do we go? We need to kick this up a notch. We can't just sit back and talk about it. We need to, to make people listen to us now. We need to be heard and we can't let this go on. Um, and, and, and that is absolutely right. I, I agree with that absolutely 100%. However, in order to be targeted and effective in what we're looking at doing, we do need to know what we're up against and we need to know what the message is that we're going to be giving to the people who are to become targets, if you like. Um, so there's one more little bit that I want to cover and then I want to go through the idea it's just a nascent idea that i've had in my mind and i think it'll work and i want to run it by chat and if people want to pick it up and run with it so much the better but let me let me just go to section five of the documentation which says commercial communications are prohibited commercial communications on radio are prohibited that's b then we have any form of public or private contribution to radio programs with the aim of direct or indirect effect of promoting electronic cigarettes and refill, refill containers is prohibited. That's our Y4 radio. Any form of public or private contribution to any event, activity or individual with the aim or, of direct or indirect effect of promoting electronic cigarettes and uh, cross-border Audio-visual commercial communications, that's us, are prohibited, and cross-border distance, distance sales are regulated in accordance with Article 16, which we don't have sight of in the final format. Let me tell you what that means. What that means is, in two years' time, vapetrails.tv, according to that, is illegal. Vapefest is illegal. Vape meets are illegal. Two people standing in a bus stop vaping and talking to somebody who doesn't already vape and saying you want to try these these are good is illegal they are in effect gagging everybody including the press we've got two years before legally we're gagged and we need to make our voices heard now i'm just going to throw that to dave for his comments while chat makes theirs yeah i've got i've got two comments on that really dave i think the first one is is it two years we just don't know yet we haven't been given the implementation time frame for this have we no the only time two years has been mentioned that i know of is that's when they're going to review and start banning refillables in, in my view mm -hmm. uh, and the um the the other comment i've got on that is uh, a bit like using the easy guy in my hand a moment ago this one they can piss off uh vttv they, they get you know what was it i said to you earlier when i see flashing blue lights then I'll think about turning it off. That's pretty much where I am as well. Um, yep. Same with you, Sav? Damn right. Under no circumstances. I ain't going to go quietly. They'll have to lock me up to shut me up. That's the easiest way to put it. So what are we going to do about all of this? Well, here's an idea. Um, as of Friday, both UK Parliament and uh, the EU Parliament is effectively on holiday. They're having their feet up for Christmas, as we all need to do. But come January the 3rd or 4th, then we need to be getting back in business. And I came up with a little idea. Before I tell you the idea, because I don't want these two statements to be linked in any way, shape or form. But Dave, do you have a tattoo on your forehead saying what your constituency is for your local MP? Uh, not last time I looked, but it's a while since I looked in the mirror, if I'm honest. Well, I'm looking at you here and I can't see one. And there isn't one on your forehead that says which, which of the MEPs are yours either, is there? No, there isn't. No. So if, if you happen to be in 
another MP's constituency talking to them, they wouldn't necessarily know that you weren't their constituent, would they? You wouldn't have thought so, no. No. Sav, does the same apply to you? No, it applies exactly the same to me. I think probably the same applies to chat. Ignore I just said that. Here's a thought I've had. Every MP and every MEP that opposes us has an office. And now the MPs that oppose us, are the majority of them are Labour, of course. Um, but every MP has an office. And everywhere, in every MP's constituency, there will be a vapour. Who knows what the situation is? And I would imagine that we've got probably 250 constituencies represented in chat and watching this programme right at this moment. It therefore makes sense, I think, that a group of people, constituents, could gather outside the MP's office or MEP's office at a given time and have a little mini vape meet, if you like, with flasks of tea and biscuits, vaping on Generation 2 and Generation 3 devices that would, under the uh, regulation proposed by the EU Parliament, uh, by the, the Commission rather, uh, which would become illegal in a couple of years' time when all of this is implemented, it might be a damned good idea to get there and tell them what we want them to do. Politely, in a genteel manner, we need to get in front of their faces. And I'm not saying everybody does it at the same time on the same day. No, 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 no. No tattoos. It might be useful if... I can only take my own local area, uh, but if Horton and Washington was done on Friday and Sunderland 1 was done on Friday afternoon, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon for Sunderland 2 and Gateshead West, and so on and so forth, with numbers, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, all very polite. I think it's called civil disobedience, that kind of thing, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, it is, and um, <clears throat> and I think it's a good place to start, frankly, because, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm watching some of the comments in chat, and I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, I feel like I want to do something more than that, but I don't know what it is. Well, that's the hard part. Has chat come up with anything, Sav? Nothing that I could read out on air that probably wouldn't get a few people jailed. Okay. But... Um, they're thinking, and I know there's a, they're very, very frustrated. Um, they sort of, I mean, Laurie and and Seas just said, we need a stunt, we need something, we need, because, I mean, they were talking about the, the media and stuff, and Leanna Lawler said the press should be screaming at this because they're being gagged. And that's the same egomaniac said, it's politically brilliant, silence the opposition while regulating them out of existence. Well, that's exactly the point. But before we're regulated out of existence, we need to make a noise. And by the way, we, we as VaporTrails.tv, we will not be regulated out of existence. Sod that. The, is it called the dark web, Dave? Yeah, there's, there's ways. There's ways. Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, uh, just on the subject of VTTV, um, the reason that we get caught by this is we're funded for the bandwidth. Hmm. But the um, the availability of free bandwidth is getting ever more reliable. Okey dokey. That works for me. I mean, we will find a way around it. Whatever, we will find a way around it. Sav, I heard you with an intake of breath. Yeah, um, someone in chat called Durham has said, well, come on then, Dave, get this sorted here and we'll start the ball rolling. Okay. It, 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 it is very, very simple. And... We have the mechanism already there in Twitter. And Twitter has been amazingly successful at what we've been trying to do. It's a form of instant communication. A while ago, I said tweet with a hashtag of the first three or four of your postcodes so people can identify where you are. Um, it might be a good idea to say, right, I happen to know my MEP or MP will be in the office on Friday morning from 10 o'clock. I want 20 people to come and join me. Doink, go for it. Do it, organise it. And let's see how many MPs and MEPs we can, I believe it's called, picket during the course of January 
that sounds like a good place to start and it gives us time to dream up stunt stunts. Sorry, Dave? You said pick it. Sorry, my bad. Did I? <laughs> oh, I do apologise. I meant gather for a mini vape meet outside the MP's office. I do apologise. That was a slip of the tongue. That I have no idea where that came from. Sav? Not a clue. No idea. I think you were talking about the flying pickets. But Yes. Um, there's a, a suggestion that's coming in from Joanne Lincoln in chat. And she says, we need to cash as much stuff as we can in e-cig banks all over Europe. Not for our own use, but for giving out to people who want to make the switch in the future. We can't let this go away. And she's very right. She is very right. Um, and that's something that, that, that does need to be looked at. The thing about these little mini-meets, though, is they can happen in every member state because you're talking in your own language to your own representative as they have to get past you to get into their office and stuff like that. It's, it's a start. I've been racking my brains trying to think of things. This is a good start and I'm more than open to hearing other people's ideas and I would love to see other forms of action being taken. I am reminded of Batman climbing over, was it Buckingham Palace, wasn't it? Batman or Superman or somebody climbed? Father's yeah, it was Batman, wasn't it? They, they did a few stunts, didn't they, uh, Fathers for Justice? And uh, they ultimately got got the attention they were after, didn't they? Well, someone in chat did mention, do we know anyone who, who's a mountaineer? Because the shard looks quite appealing for climbing. Uh, you can count me out on that one. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a devout, devout... I get a <laughs> nosebleed on a thick carpet, but yes... <laughs> Johnny Lavery's also said one place that's always open for cameras is Downing Street. Yeah, well, all, you, <coughs> all oh. you need to do is push a bike up to the bobbies and call them a pleb. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Outlaw Cox has said let's hit Parliament Speaker's Corner. All of these things. All of these things. There's a theme here. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, VTTV... We, we, we can do so much. We can coordinate. We can spread the word. We can even kick off a number of initiatives. And uh, and Dave there has really driven. He's been involved in most of what's been good in the consumer campaign and 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 fight back, if you like, against the, these these the. I, I'll I'll call them politicians, but I'm <laughs> I know what you mean. And I've got a couple of more things, sorry Dave, uh, before they disappear. Hang on, Sav, let Dave finish. But I, I, all I'm going to say is is that, you know, we, we can't sit here, think up all these ideas and organise them all. You know, we're about ten people, that's what we are, yeah? So, so people are talking about going up a level, come on, let's hear it, what, 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 what do you think we should be doing? Because uh, if you think we've got the uh, the solution here uh, and and the the magic bullet, we just don't. Okay, we're up for it, like you guys, but it can't be all be just down to us. I think the fact of the matter is, we're a conduit. Use us, use us. We we will help in any way we possibly can. We'll spread the word as far as we possibly can. We'll we'll put every resource that we've got into fighting this, but. We do need ideas and help. Sav, you had something to say? Yes, I've got those ideas that are coming in from chat. Um, the Furious Fury 79 has said he fancies the challenge. He likes climbing. He's going to look into the shard. Good man. Gillis has said we need to put a savings plan in place ready for legal action, possibly raffles with donations from vendors. Um, Damph Kex has said we should have vaping flash mobs, um, to which Cerulean C said flash mobs with our mouths taped up. And DB Spider says, why not have regional vape parties? All, all great ideas. All great ideas. I, I mean, look, I, I've, I've spoken to a few um, MEPs who are 100% with us. I'm not going to name any names. Everybody knows who they are. Um, and they've all suggested the same thing. Those of you that have elected representatives that haven't been listening to you, you need to make them listen. You need to be loud. You need to ramp it up. And if that means having these little regional vape parties made more, more macro regional outside MPs and MEPs offices, that's what it needs. And it's very easy to organise. It's not scary because you're not going to do anything to break the law. It's not like there's going to be 500 of you standing there chanting, you are a wanker, we're going to hang you because you're not. 
you're going to stand there and you're going to show them and you're going to talk to them and you're going to get the regional news involved and when they see this is going national then mainstream news follows it's all about raising the profile but it does mean that we've got to show that we are reasonable people that we aren't seeking to ban that we know what we want and we're going around a peaceful methodology of getting it peaceful but assertive assertive is the word as in we know what we want and we want to make sure we get it that's the only kind of watchword i would put there for that um and, I, I, and I've got to echo what Dave says. We'll help in any way we can. But we we'll kind of come up with all the ideas. I wish we could. I wish I had the magic bullet. I really do wish I had the magic bullet. Because I'd, I'd put it out there like a shot. Um, we've got to go and take another set of ads. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. And then I've decided I, wa I, I was going to play McAvan's Mac press conference in. But frankly, I don't think she's worth the airwaves. It didn't say anything anyway, did it? Nah. No, nah, it was just more lies. Um, but we have heard from people that do seem to know what they're talking about, that are putting pressure on the Department of Health, and we need to build on that. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. We're back in the room and we are back in the room as i was just saying there um so I've, I, I i can predict the chat has been extremely busy yes we've got um again a lot more um suggestions uh gavin jones has said the problem is we don't fully know the rules of the game it's not the players it's the game we need to win mm -hmm. magpie says we need the vendors in this fight as well Gavin Jones says we need legal advice, good impartial legal advice now. Andy, our own smoke of vapor said, um, and this is something that I spoke to you, I think, a couple of days ago about as well. A pedestrian crossing chain in front of the Houses of Parliament at 10 Downing Street, enough people to keep the crossing full, all vaping. And I know this works because my husband works in London um, and he works around the Houses of Parliament. And his job is keeping the traffic flowing and he says the most disruptive thing he's ever had to deal with was 10 people constantly crossing a zebra crossing outside and it brought central London to a standstill so I know that one works I, um, I was going to ask you how many people it took to do that ten. it took 10 well London vapors there you go back to you Saf yeah my husband's going to love me for that <laughs> <laughs> Paul Kendrick has said someone in the UK was, was saying to CC local papers into emails with politicals and Jeff Caldicott said have a mini vape meet outside the BBC Manchester offices um, I've got a couple more that just come in Kickbutt says um, it's a question when will we know when all this comes into force and a very boring has said Mr Sutton may have to start sneaking subliminal messages into his editing work <laughs> <laughs> the hairy bikers do vape fest um, comments Dave say again I just respond to one of those comments you can 
And somebody said we need to get solicitors uh, and lawyers involved. And and I, I, I think what was that? That's a very valid point. At the moment, I'd be surprised if any any solicitor said to us anything other than, "Well, they haven't actually put it into force yet." Yeah. I think I think, uh, and I saw I saw uh, Lorian making a similar point earlier in chat as it went past, and saying that the time now is for advocacy. Yeah. Uh, Hey, look, guys, we all said strongly that this is going to go into law. It's going to be passed, but it hasn't yet. So so the uh, it, it's, it's not so much the cost of solicitors uh, or, or, or anything like that. It, it's probably a bit too soon. Solicitors can only help us when there's a law to fight, when there's a court case to be battled. Yes. And, and now it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to mind with the people that... that um, that, uh, that are going to make the decisions. And yes, Crossbow, that's a fair comment. Uh, the cost does matter. But it doesn't matter yet. That's my point. <laughs> exactly right. I mean, fr from, from the point of view of, of action that needs to be taken, there are, there are two courses of action that need to be taken. And I know that the trade, the vendors, are already doing the, the legwork and the footwork and the research and everything else on all of the legal sides and the procedural sides and all of that kind of stuff. And that that's that's brilliant because, you know, they've got some bloody good minds involved in all of that and there are some damn good legal boards already on tap. Um, Crossbow knows what's going on with all of that and, you know, that's all good. As consumers, though, I'm not even sure we can bring a, a court case, can we? until somebody's arrested exactly you know i mean uh, if if you get arrested for vaping and uh you end up in court then you can fight a court case um uh it would I, i'm not an expert in this at all okay but but it it seems to me that uh the the, the first court cases are going to be probably from vendors who can talk about things like restriction of trade and, and you know, sort of um, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, you know, so, sort of uh, the breach of the EU's com competition laws and regulations and stuff like that. Uh, but but th there isn't a lot for us to do. I mean, uh, th okay, some firms of accountants and legal firms are probably very clued up and have some clued up people who can tell you what you can get away with and things like that. Um, but I, I think I think probably you know in terms of professional help that we need, we probably need more really PR to get the press on our side. Um, well, yeah. I, I think this this is this this was where I'm, this this notion of mini vape meets, and I'm sorry for using the word picket earlier, um, but where where my notion of these mini vape meets came about was if we organise them and we stand outside the offices. You know, it, it's it's very easy to find out when the MP is going to be there. You just got a phone and ring them up and find out, um, or an MEP. If you go and stand outside there and let the local paper know that that'll be happening at whatever time, and there's going to be another one, 15, 20 miles away, three hours later, because we're only talking about a couple of hours. It's not difficult for people to do, and we can do that very quickly in January. And if I mean, I don't know about, about your local papers or anybody else's, but I do know that um, Portsmouth Press, for instance, has local newspapers everywhere. And I do know that their editors all talk to each other and they're emailing each other and they've got forums, company forums. And if they keep on, hang on a minute, th there's, there's these ESIG users are doing this absolutely everywhere. And if it's not just Manchester BBC, but do it outside BBC Newcastle, BBC Middlesbrough, BBC wherever they happen to be. If you've got a local BBC, let's all do it on one day. Let's say the, the second second Saturday, the second Saturday in January, why don't we all meet outside our local BBC offices and stand there quietly vaping? You can walk into any of the BBC places. No, I don't mean in the building, but you can walk up to any of the BBC studios and stand there quietly vaping. And if we happen to sing a couple of songs or play Black Balloons off a, a, a beatbox or something like that and they come out and ask what's going on, if this is happening in every BBC studio on the second Saturday in January, I have the feeling they might uh, prick their ears up and take notice. What do you think, Dave? 
Yeah, well, I was just uh, uh, going to mention there that uh, Dave Malik has just reminded me that they had a sort of dry run of this kind of approach outside the civic buildings in Wolverhampton recently. Absolutely, and and I'm, I'm and I'm going to I'm going to say this straight away. That's exactly what made me think of this. I mean, what? It's- it, 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 it's such a brilliant idea because it takes very little organising but it, if there's enough of them happening it can be very effective um, Sav? Right I've got another load of stuff come from chat um, Yoda 1970 said here's an idea how about everybody take out ads in their free ads publications most regions have got them paper copies and online versions just letting people know what's going on in a sensible way using sensible language yes Crosslord has said, we, very similar to what you've just said, we should all meet outside BBC Studios, all wearing one colour tops so they can see we are a group and have a vape for an hour or two. I'm sure the news crews would come down to see what we're doing and get some news coverage. Hell yes. Uh, Lena Marie Popper said, we want civil di- disobedience, not outright breaking of the law, though. Um, Chan says, will the EU Parliament have to vote on the current text yet again? Which you can get back to that one in a minute. Yep. Jester2109 says, what about engaging some of the celebrity vapors as the press are interested in them? Robert Gleave says, with regards to the law, it's I see it as a human rights issue. I want to invite nicotine, but I don't want to smoke. That should be my choice. Andy D said, stunts that disrupt Joe, Joe so public will harm us. Probably shouldn't go there. Freight LX says, suggestion, pick up... Pick a place in London and place a stone every time a smoker dies somewhere in the world. After a few weeks, it will look like the Berlin Wall. Then put a poster on it with a positive vaping message. Trelento says, the press are a a threat now. We need to enlist them. And Nelva Port says, what is the final aim of this? Are we pushing for the MEPs to vote no to the TPD? What are the pros and cons of that? Well, if I can take the last one first... What I would like to see is ASICs taken out of the TPD. Um, as the Lib Dem uh, press release that came out yesterday or the, the day before yesterday said, they shouldn't have been in there in the first place. And they're right. They bloody well shouldn't. They're not a tobacco product by any stretch of the imagination. Neither are they a medicinal product. They are a consumer product. And I'd like to see them taken out. And yes, that can be voted out. That, I think, is the message that we need to be getting across um, if anything changes on that, and, and I'm taking advice from people who know about all of this, but my, and this is my personal feeling, e-cigs should not be in the TPD. I'd rather take my chances with the MHRA because the courts will back us, frankly. That's my viewpoint. I, I was holding out for a lot better than we got. Um, the fact that this has happened... Uh, in trilogue appalls me it absolutely appalls me it is absolutely ridiculous and the best way we can fight it is by getting out there and making our protest heard in as many places as we possibly can so all of the bbc places second saturday in january and that would apply to all of the other european Um, television stations as well we've got time enough to sort it so Germany France Belgium Holland Spain Italy wherever you're viewing Poland Hungary all of these places your local radio uh, television station or radio station get a group of people outside of it everybody knows where they are and vape and get your voices heard let's make this the whole of Europe on the second Saturday in January let's make it a date Sav Can I just jump in with something that David Drummond typed in the chat? Um, And I think this is a good idea. We all need to be singing the same message. One message only. Get it out there. The same message all all over Europe. Absolutely right. Yes. We will not accept what has been decided today. E-cigs out of the TPD. And we're not alone in thinking that. There are people in power that also think that. Um, Div? Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to pick out one phrase you use there. We don't accept it. I absolutely do not accept it. Get stuffed. I ain't doing it. That's my message. Exactly. And 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 uh, the, I just I'm just sort of tracking chat. It's kind of hypnotic. Uh, the, the 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 idea of gathering outside the BBC. There were a couple of comments there. I saw one saying the BBC are not free to say what they want. They are if they choose to. And let's face it, they're everywhere. Somebody asked whether it should be a TV or radio station. Doesn't matter. Media. 
just just let's just make it a BBC building and give it the uh, the, the the you know let people be clear that the uh, that, that it's a joined up coordinated action. Yes, that th th this is vapors united, vapors united in a common cause. BBC second Saturday. That'll give them something to chew on because by then they're bound to know that on the 16th, Chris Choi's Tonight programme will be looking at e-cigs. Now I've got, I, I'm, I would love to think I would get a look at it before it went out. I can't promise anything. But that's going to make that week quite e-cig heavy. The Saturday before. And if necessarily we can do it the Saturday after. So it's the second Saturday in January. Every local BBC station. Go on, Sav, I can hear you gasping to get in. I'm just saying that would be the 11th. And someone suggested make it 11am on the 11th. <laughs> it was Disco da Dares suggested. Um, I guess then it would be the 11th of the first. 11am all the ones. Yes. The air, I like that. Do you like that, Dave? I do like that. And I'd yeah, after my birthday as well, just don't forget. That we can hold up outside the BBC that says uh, ITV are interested. <laughs> Why aren't you? <laughs> Again. So that's where we're at, isn't it? We're provoking the interest. We want them to come and ask us, what the hell are you guys doing? Yes. And that gives us the opportunity to tell them and then the opportunity to report it. I think I, as as you know, if we achieved, if we've achieved nothing else in this show tonight, but to do that on the 11th of January at 11 a.m., then I think that would go a long way towards getting things done. And if we can also do this, I was going to say the picket word again. If we can also do these mini vape meets outside MPs and MEPs offices. And like I said, it only needs 20 or 30 people, 15 to 30 people, that's all it needs. And you don't have a tattoo on your head, you know what to do. You know how to do it. It's dead easy to do. Organise locally. Organise locally. Let's show these people that we care and that we are not going to go away and we're not going to go down without a fight. All in favour say aye. 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 Anything more from chat, Sav, and then I'll play this video in. Um, just one thing from Jock Vip, who's saying we, could, we should use the VTTV forum to coordinate um, all the various places that people are meeting from. I, I, I mean, use use wherever's easiest for you to use, because if well, if you want it, but you know, I mean, um, it doesn't matter, does it? No. It use whatever is easiest, but the VTTV our forum. <laughs> Is there if you need to use it or if you want to use it? I mean, it, it, for, for me, the immediacy of Twitter is marvellous. It absolutely is. Um, but all of the forums, use them all. You just just organise. Organise locally. Um, the reality is, if you post it on one of these forums, it will be on all of the forums because there's enough of us that, that, that bounce between them all. You know, um, uh, we, we don't want anybody sort of... Uh, sort of getting upset that it's been organised on the wrong forum. This has got nothing to do with that. But use, use any resource that's available to you. Absolutely right. I mean, you, and, and any, any skeletons in closets and, and hatchets need to be buried, no matter what. We, we've all got to pull together on this one as consumers, no matter what. Um, the, the time is now. And if we don't do it now, we've only got, at best, a couple or three months to get this sorted out. Um, and to make our voices heard so whatever the beef bury the beef it, it just doesn't matter it really doesn't we've we've got to be doing this i'm going to be doing it i'll be organizing one outside bridget phillipson's place although she's supportive i know she won't object to meeting people um and i'm going to do one with uh, stephen hughes who's down in darlington so any darlington vapors or people in thornaby or wherever we're all part of the same region for meps let's get that down there as well but on the second saturday in january i will be outside bbc new castle we'll pick a color shirt whatever out oh, you great i'll be all right the uh, yours mostly are aren't they really <laughs> some somebody pick a color shirt and we'll all wear the same color shirt but the second saturday in january sav <laughs> you said pick a color so far we've got red pink yellow or black 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 yeah black, black i can do the predominant answer yeah we can yeah. all do black we can all do black 
Um, and if people have got E6 Save Lives t-shirts, anything like that, yeah, wear them. Black. Black will be good. <laughs> anything? <laughs> One isn't A <laughs> um, couple of little things. Uh, Craig Butzer said, announce it to UK column. They will help to get the word out and the attention drawn. Who? I don't know. I'm sure someone in chat will um, enlighten me. UK column. New one on me. And yeah. me. Well, hey. I if, want to know about it. If, if you've got contacts, use them. I would, yeah. I would also say that if you get on to your local supportive MEP, and there are quite a few, they will turn up outside the BBC. I'm going to be letting Martin Callanan know and Fiona Hall um, and any others that are fairly local. Um, let's get them turning up as well. So if there's MEPs and MPs and us stood outside the BBC on the second Saturday at 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock on the 11th of January outside every BBC station, I think that'll make an impact. I think that's a brilliant idea. Who came up with it? Craig Boots, ukcolumn.org, he says, look it up on the web. Right. Just a quick comment. There's people talking about it would be nice to have flyers. Yeah, great. If you can get some together, do it. But it's not, it's not a prerequisite, you know? Uh, if if we worry too much about getting flyers printed and everybody having them in the right place and all and, and, and you know on the right time and all the rest of it, 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 it overcomplicates it. The main thing is that you're there to speak. Absolutely right. And you know, if if you're a little bit shy, elect a gobshite. There's bound to be somebody. Just numbers. That's all it needs. Numbers. They'll ask your your opinion, and it's dead easy to talk to camera. Good lord, we do it every night of the week, don't we, Dave? We do. If if it looks too organised, they'll accuse you of astroturfing anyway. Uh, exactly right, and that's something that we do want to avoid. So even even if your main form of uh, business is as a printer of big banners with sticks on, don't Try make it look like you did it in crayon. Yes. Sharp, don't, 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 it doesn't need to look professional, it just needs to happen. That's all that matters. And as we're doing this and other people come up with other ideas, share your ideas on Twitter, let's make this work. Let me know, we'll, we'll spread it as far and wide as we can. We are here to be used as a conduit. That's what we're here for. Um, it's why we exist. You know, it's, it's trust us, it's, it's not all about us. And, it, and Sav will tell you, I've, it's not about me, is it? It's about no, everybody I'm, else. I just have to read this one comment. It's just coming from the Furious Fury, and he says, reporting for Gobshite Duty DD. Good man. All Gobshites together. I'm a founder member of the Gobshite party. All Gobshites. Three, three fingers. There you go. Actually, we only use the middle one when we're talking to uh, certain MAPs. We are the Gobshites. And, and yes, that's fine. All the Gobshites get together. Let's get these running. Second Saturday, January. I think it's a brilliant idea. Well it's done. It's an idea, this one. It's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. We'll, we'll be heard. We will be heard. Right. Um, look, let's, now that we've settled that, there was a, a meeting, was it the day before yesterday or yesterday? I've lost track of time. I'm not even sure what day it is. In the House of Lords. This is the grand committee in the House of Lords. And I got emailed it. Um, and it's 40 some minutes i'm going to start playing it in now um it's fabulous absolutely fabulous there's one man opens his mouth that has anything wrong to say really and that's the last man standing even the ones that appear to be against what we want are making the case for us have a watch um if we need to come back, if we've got enough in chat, we'll come back after it. It's about 40 odd minutes. Uh, take a toilet break. I would think it's about 18 minutes in. Mm -hmm. Oh, just for those of you that are of a nervous disposition, Jeremy Means in it. But he doesn't say anything, so it's not so bad. Here it is. Viscount Astor. My lords, um, electronic cigarettes. Um, are tubes that contain, that stimulate the effect of smoking. Um, but e-cigarettes, some contain, uh, they, they, they contain nicotine, but importantly, they don't contain tobacco. Inside an e-cigarette, there's a small computer chip 
a lithium battery, a heating element, and a cartridge filled with water containing a dissolved pharmaceutical grade nicotine. You take a puff and the heater fires up the element to about 150 degrees centigrade. This heats the liquid in the cartridge and it evaporates. You inhale and that gives a so-called nicotine hit. And then you exhale what looks like smoke but is in fact water vapour. E-cigarettes are regarded by some as a new dangerous nicotine habit but by others as a new and successful way to quit smoking. The truth is perhaps somewhere in the middle. But it is clear that e-cigarettes are here to stay. The market is expected to grow from 1 billion this year to 10 billion over the next five years. It's unregulated at the point of sale in this country and in the EU and in most countries worldwide. There has been a recent attempt by the European Commission who introduced a draft directive which was backed by this government to regulate electronic cigarettes as medicines, but this proposal was thrown out by the European Parliament. The majority in the European Parliament supported using a mixture of tobacco regulation controls on promotion and reporting of adverse reactions. I understand that negotiations continued and have been continued right up to day and I hope the Minister will be able to give us any notice of any progress. The government have encouraged e-cigarette producers to voluntarily seek a licence for their products so that they can meet standards of safety, quality and be sold on prescription. Can my noble friend the Minister say how many companies that produce and sell e-cigarettes have signed up to this voluntary code and how many <coughs> are estimated not to have signed up. Perhaps the Minister can also confirm what the cost of validation might be for producers complying with a medical directive. I understand that it would be over a quarter of a million pounds. This would put most of the smaller suppliers out of business and hand the industry to the large tobacco companies and perhaps stifle competition. If one drives into London on, from the, on the M4, you can see three new vast advertising hoardings promoting e-cigarettes. Do the government think that they will approve of this kind of advertising, which will not be allowed for normal cigarettes? There is a difficult issue here, because most e-cigarettes have 5% of nicotine, but some, probably 10% of the market, have no nicotine at all, and, for example, cherry-flavoured or other kind of sort of bubblegum flavours. Some look like cigarettes, some look like a pencil, some look like a pipe end without a pipe. So how would the government, if it wanted to regulate, regulate an e-cigarette that contains no nicotine? Indeed, is it an e-cigarette? Is it a toy or is it something else? Now, at the moment, e-cigarettes can be sold to children. So does the minister believe there should be an age limit? Or are we going to see school playgrounds full of puffing children, or perhaps I should say even more children puffing. But if so, would it be illegal for them to puff an e-cigarette that doesn't contain any nicotine at all? After all, what comes out of an e-cigarette is just harmless vapour, not smoke. Most e-cigarettes are made in China. The nicotine or other flavours are also mainly manufactured there. So is there any form of inspection regime for the importation of this nicotine additive? There is evidence that in America, e-smoking is on this increase, but not necessarily that e-cigarettes are a gateway to smoking. There are, however, about 2.5 million estimated users in the US. We do know that nicotine is an addictive drug, but this new invention could set some, and this new invention could set, set some on the path of nicotine addiction. But that is nicotine in very small amounts, which is hardly harmful in comparison with the addiction and, and danger and damage of smoking. E-cigarettes could save the lives of millions of smokers by weaning them off normal cigarettes. And they are proved in many cases to be a welcome aid to smokers who try and quit. For example, the ones who failed to do with the, um, the nicotine chewing gum or the patches. The value of health gains associated with a success, single successful quit attempt is very substantial. And the government's own Department of Health estimates that to be, to be valued at over £70,000. So this is the dilemma that's facing health experts, policy makers and regulators, and indeed the Minister. There's very little research on the effects of e-cigarettes. While they are definitely less harmful than normal cigarettes, they do contain carcinogen, carcinogens and toxic chemicals, albeit in very small quantities. E-cigarettes have been cried by some as a wistful thinking Wistful thinking over, uh, over clear data, 
Uh, they've also been described as an opportunity to improve the public health. But nearer to home, um, ASH, the Action on Smoking and Health, supports the use of licensed nicotine products as an aid to cutting down or quitting smoking and as a substitute for smoking. They satisfy the desire to smoke and help cut down on those who wish to smoke. And, of course, they eradicate the smell of stale smoke and, indeed, the effect of passive smoking on anybody nearby. Most diseases that we associate with smoking are caused by inhaling smoke, which can contain thousands of toxic chemicals. As I said, by contrast, nicotine is relatively safe. So my final question to my note from the Minister is, do we have to wait until the EU Commission and the European Parliament finally agree, if they ever do? Or can the government introduce sensible regulations on the advertising, promotion and sale of e-cigarettes? If the government over-regulate the sale of e-cigarettes and restrict their use, they will actually increase the cost to health in this country and miss an opportunity to cut down on smoking. <coughs> my Lords, I first have to declare my interest as a trustee of the British Lung Foundation. Lung disease can affect everyone, but it seems to be particularly prevalent in the poorest parts of the country. And, of course, heavy smoking is strongly correlated with poverty. Tobacco is by far the largest cause of lung disease, and a very large number of people go through a painful and debilitating death because of it. I have many friends who have spent their lives trying in vain to help people addicted to cigarettes, and it's understandable that they passionately hate anything to do with smoking, including e-cigarettes. When I visited the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in January of this year, which I think is the largest trade exhibition in the world, I saw about 200 Chinese manufacturers of e-cigarettes open for business. There's a tide of these things coming. They were the most common new product in the show after iPhone cases. One could just wish that they would go away, but of course they won't. So I congratulate my noble friend, Viscount Astor, for opening this debate. Many people have been wishing e-cigarettes away. This is a useful chance to debate them. People are addicted to nicotine, but it is the tar that kills them. This seems well established. But a part of the addiction to cigarettes is not just the chemi chemical nicotine, it's the handling of a cigarette, the sociability and the feel of it. Certainly, an e-cigarette provides a substitution to some of these sensations. They seem a reasonable and less dangerous product than conventional, than conventional cigarettes. The trouble is that we're fighting the battle against the killer tobacco on three fronts. On cost, by increasing consumption taxes by education at the earlier stages to ensure those likely to start smoking, namely teenagers, are aware of the risks involved, and by making cigarettes abnormal, by keeping them locked behind shutters at the supermarket and other proposals like plain packaging. It seems that the third, denormalisation, is at least as powerful as the other two, and the concern is that e-cigarettes can undo a lot of the good work done to make cigarettes into an unusual habit and their users into something akin to pariahs. If it is okay to smoke e-cigarettes, will it become okay to smoke normal ones again? Will users ever kick the habit of enjoying nicotine and holding a cigarette? <clears throat> My Lords, and another important question must also be addressed. What are they? Do they just contain nicotine and vapour, or anything else at all? This seems to call for regulation as a simple product to ensure quality. Could my noble friend, the Minister, encourage his department to sponsor some research into the effects of nicotine alone? It is said to be dangerous to those with a heart problem or to pregnant women, but the truth is that there has not been enough research on this subject for sure. But it is important to understand how e-cigarettes are changing the behaviour of smokers of conventional cigarettes. Ash has reported that as many as 1.3 million people occasionally use e-cigarettes and that 400,000 people are using e-cigarettes in total or partial replacement of normal cigarettes. That is great news, my lord. The danger people spot is that children might become likely to take up normal cigarettes after trying e-cigarettes. We can't tell if that's so because there's not been any research on this, but logic suggests otherwise. Teenagers smoke cigarettes to look cool, and e-cigarettes are not cool. They're about giving up an addiction. Now, no teenager wants to look like they're giving up something. They want to look as though they have no problems. 
Let me quote from the Institute of Economic Affairs Research from July 2013. Far from acting as a gateway to smoking, all the evidence indicates that e-cigarettes are a gateway from smoking. Evidence from ASH supports this statement. Indeed, the fact that 400,000 people have given up cigarettes is great news, and if we concentrate on that, we should say there should be no real restriction on the sale or advertising of e-cigarettes. If they're mainly used by existing smokers as a way of quitting, we could even do good by giving them away to smokers. <clears throat> My Lord, if we are to have some regulation, can I suggest that it should be on the quality of the contents alone? That is, restricting the ingredients to nicotine, ensuring damaging toxins are kept out of them, and not allowing flavoured e-cigarettes specifically designed to attract children, like bubblegum e-cigarettes or such like. In choosing today for the short debate, my noble friend Viscount Astor has shown a downright astonishing ability to predict the future. Because a provisional deal was reached last night in Brussels between MEPs and national governments on a new tobacco products directive, it has been said by Martin Callanan, MEP, that this directive will take the majority of e-cigarettes off the market. It would restrict all the weaker e-cigarettes when smokers who are considering using e-cigarettes to break the addiction tend to begin on stronger e-cigarettes and gradually reduce their usage. Making stronger e-cigarettes harder to come across will encourage smokers to stay on tobacco. Among the points made in the draft directive in paragraph 3.7 is that the purpose of the directive is to stop more people unaware of the content and effects of these products inadvertently developing a nicotine addiction. The idea that someone will inadvertently become addicted without the help of the EU seems to me rather unlikely. <laughs> and, my lords, may I, lastly, may I pose a uh, conundrum for my noble friend, the Minister? If we go ahead with plain packaging for cigarettes, which are actually uh, coloured with lurid photographs of health problems, do we allow e-cigarettes to be sold in similar packages if the manufacturer actually wants to? That is something that perhaps the great Sherlock Holmes might describe as a three-pipe problem. My Lords, uh, I congratulate the noble Viscount Lord Astor for um, securing this debate, uh, and uh, I think it's an issue of much greater importance than the sparse attendance might imply, and one that's growing in importance. Uh, I have no interest to declare in electronic cigarettes. I dislike smoking. I've never done it. Uh, and I've only once tried a puff on an e-cigarette and it did, did nothing for me. Um, I'm interested in this issue as a counterproductive application of the precautionary principle. And I would like to say that I'm indebted to Ian Gregory of Centaurus Communications for some of the facts and figures that I'm going to quote shortly. There are at the moment about one million people in this country who are using electronic cigarettes. There's, an, there's been an eight-fold increase in the last year in the number of people using them to, to try to quit smoking. Already, 15% of ex-smokers have tried them, uh, and they have overtaken nicotine patches and other approaches to become the top method of quitting in a very short time. The majority of those who use electronic cigarettes to try to quit smoking are saying that they are successful. So here we have a technology that is clearly saving lives on a huge scale. I mean, if only 10% of the 1 million users in the country are successful in quitting, then that would save £7 billion, uh, according to the Department of Health figures, which were given in answer to my written question last month, that the health benefits of each quit attempt are about £74,000. And in that answer, the Minister said that a policy of licensing electronic cigarettes would have to create very few additional successful quit attempts for the benefit to justify the cost of licensing. But my lords, who thinks that licensing will create extra quit attempts? By adding to the cost of electronic cigarettes, by reducing advertising, by unglamorizing them, it's far more likely that licensing will create fewer quit attempts. So would my noble friend the Minister therefore confirm that by the same token, a policy of licensing electronic cigarettes would have to reduce quit attempts by a very small number for that policy to be a mistake. 
Now, nicotine patches are used to reduce uh, smoking as well, and they have been medicinally regulated, but they have shown extraordinarily little innovation and very low take-up over the years. So does my noble friend, the Minister, agree with the report by Professor Peter Hayek in The Lancet earlier this year, which said that the 30-year failure of nicotine patches demonstrated how the expenses and delays of medicinal regulation can stifle innovation? Does the, my noble friend, the Minister, also agree with analysts from Wells Fargo who said this month that if electronic cigarette innovation is stifled, this could dramatically slow conversion from combustible cigarettes? My Lords, I think we should try a thought experiment. Let's divide the country in two. Uh, in one half, let's call it East Germany for the sake of argument, we'll regulate them as medicines. Uh, ban their use in public places, restrict advertising, ban the sale of refillable versions, ban the sale of electronic cigarettes stronger than 20 milligrams per milliliter. In the other half, which we'll call the West, we leave them as consumer products, properly regulated as such, allow them to be advertised as glamorous, allow them on trains, in pubs, uh, allow the sale of refills, allow the sale of flavoured ones perhaps, uh, and allow stronger products. In which of these two parts of the country would smoking fall fastest? It's blindingly obvious that the East would see higher prices, and prices are a serious deterrent to smoke quit attempts because many, many of the people who smoke uh, are, um, on average, poorer than the average. We'd see less product innovation. We'd sl see slower growth of electronic cigarette use and more people going back to real cigarettes because of their inability to get hold of the type and flavour and strength that they wanted. So there would be more people quitting in the western half of the country. But what are the drawbacks of such a policy? Well, there's a risk of harm from electronic cigarettes, as we've heard. How big is that risk? Noble Lord, the Minister confirmed to me in a written answer earlier this year that the best evidence suggests that they are 1,000 times less dangerous than cigarettes. Um, and the uh, MHRA impact assessment um, says that the decision on whether to regulate them should be based on the harm they do. And yet that very impact statement says and I quote, that any risk is likely to be very small, that there is an absence of empirical evidence, that there is no direct clinical evidence, that the picture is unclear, and my favourite quote, unfortunately we have no evidence. Unfortunately there is no evidence of harm. There's said to be a risk of children taking up electronic cigarettes, then turning to real cigarettes. Well, just think about this for a second. For every child who goes from cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, there would have to be a thousand going the other way from electronic cigarettes to cigarettes for this to do net harm. And the, the evidence suggests, as my noble friend Lord Boric has said, that the gateway is the other way. 20% uh, of 15-year-olds smoke at the moment, and evidence from both ASH and from a study in Oklahoma suggest that there is strong evidence that the young people, when they use electronic cigarettes, are using them to quit, just like um, uh, adults do. So if we are to take a precautionary approach to the risks of nicotine, will my noble friend the minister consider regulating aubergines as medicines? Because they also contain nicotine. If you eat 10 grams of aubergines, which you easily could in a plate full of moussaka, uh, you will absorb the same amount of nicotine as if you had shared a room with a cigarette smoker for three hours. It's not an insignificant quantity. That's data from the New England Journal of Medicine, 1993. If we're worried about unknown and small risks, could my noble friend, the Minister, explain to me why, as Professor Hayek has put it, more dangerous chemicals such as bleach rely on packaging and common sense rather than medicinal licensing? There has been an approximately 8% fall in the use of tobacco in Europe in the last year. The tobacco companies are worried. A big part of that fall seems to be because of the rapid take-up of electronic cigarettes. They are facing their Kodak moment, the moment when their whole technology is replaced by a rival technology that is in this case a thousand times safer. So does my noble friend, the Minister, think that there may be a connection between the rise of electronic cigarettes the rapid decline in tobacco sales and the enthusiasm of tobacco companies for medicinal regulation of electronic cigarettes. It's not just big tobacco, but big pharma has shown a significant interest in the, in the regulation of uh, electronic cigarettes, not surprisingly because they are again a rival to their uh, patch products and other nicotine replacement therapies. 
Perhaps more surprisingly, a lot of the medical establishment in fa is in favour of this medicinal regulation. And I never thought I'd live to see the BMA and the tobacco industry on the same side of an argument. The BMA say that, they, that electronic cigarettes cannot be considered a lower risk option. But this completely flies in the face of the evidence. As I said, we've heard already that they are 1,000 times safer. The BMA say they're worried about passive vaping. They say they're worried about the renormalizing of smoking and the use of electronic cigarettes as a gateway to smoking. Well, the excellent charity Sense About Science, to which I'm proud to be an advisor, has asked them for evidence to support these assertions. I must say there is, my lords, a strong suspicion that the only reason the medical establishment want to see these things regulated as medicines is because they cannot bear to see the commercial sector achieving more in a year in terms of getting people off cigarettes than the public sector has achieved in 10. So instead of talking about regulating this product, should we not be talking about encouraging it promoting it, letting people vape indoors if they want, in pubs, on trains, in football grounds, specifically so that they are tempted to vape instead of smoke, because that would be an enormous benefit to them and to the country as a whole. So could I end perhaps by asking specifically in relation to the agreement that we've, as we've heard from the noble Lord Lord Boric was agreed last night, um, what the impact of that will be uh, on what's happening, and in particular, uh, on the question of advertising. Um, because, as I understand it under the agreement uh, last night, um, it will be possible for uh, uh, advertising of these things to be banned as if they were cigarettes. Um, what justification is that, given proportionality and given the evidence that they are actually going to save lives rather than hurt them? Uh, my Lords, first, could I apologise to the committee for being a little late for the start of the debate, but I do want to um, welcome this debate and congratulate the noble Viscount Lord Astor in um, allowing us to uh, discuss what I think is a very uh, interesting subject, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to the noble Earl's response to the many questions that have been put to him. Uh, my Lords, um, with more than 100,000 people dying from smoking-related diseases across Britain, every year. We clearly need to do all we can to support people to give up smoking and discourage young people from taking it up in the first place. And one thing I, I am convinced is that e-cigarettes have the potential to provide a significant boost to public health. Uh, I understand the National Institute of Health and Clinical Excellence actually supports the use of nicotine containing products like e-cigarettes as an aid to help smokers cut down on tobacco. And I think, as we've heard, uh, an estimated 400,000 people across the UK have already switched from smoking to e-cigarettes. Now, my Lords, um, I've noted the comments of the noble Lord Viscount Ridley on the risks of, of regulation, and I agree with him. It's important that regulation does not stifle innovation. On the other hand, uh, uh, as with any new fast and emerging product, uh, some additional safeguards may be needed to cover gaps in existing consumer regulations. And my Lords, I'd like perhaps to ask the Noble Earl, uh, Lord Howe about this, as to whether he considers uh, medicinal regulation of e-cigarettes will actually um, put a lot of the current e-cigarette companies uh, out of business. Now, my Lords, um, the Noble Earl, Lord Howe, of course, is very well acquainted with the work of the MHRA uh, and issues to do with the regulation of medicines and indeed um, herbal medicines, which may be relevant uh, in, the, in this context. And I just wondered if any work has been done which has estimated the cost of regulation for these products. For instance, my lords, uh, I would un imagine that a dossier has to be produced with scientific evidence to show the efficacy and safety of these products. Uh, and I wondered, my lords, whether the Nobel Earl has a, an estimate of what this is likely to cost and whether that would inhibit um, many of the small companies in this market from being able to um, carry on in business in the future when this is introduced. On the issue of regulation, my lords, um, I support a regulated approach, but one that is light touch and which is permissive rather than restrictive. Uh, my Lords, of course, as the noble Viscount has said, 
Um, the regulation of e-cigarettes has been uh, currently the subject of debate as part of the EU trilogue negotiations on the Tobacco Products Directive. And I wonder if the Nobel Oil could uh, inform the committee as to the progress of those negotiations. I understand that um, they are scheduled to conclude uh, in the coming weeks, and an update would be very much appreciated as some sense of the timeline between um, agreement within Europe and the actual implementation of this proposed directive. My Lords, I'd then like to just ask the Noble Earl, um, really leading on from the comments made by the Noble Lord Borwick. Um, he was really, I think, posing the question as to clearly um, e-cigarettes have proven to be very successful uh, in encouraging um, smokers to quit and use e-products um, in e-cigarettes instead. But he did pose the question as to whether there are circumstances uh, in which e-cigarettes could be a passport to tobacco smoking. And I think, my lords, he talked about teenagers in particular, and he was implying that uh, some of the marketing approaches of the e-cigarette manufacturers might indeed um, provide a cool image to, to young people who would then take up e-cigarettes and then might be tempted to go on to tobacco products. And my lords, I don't know if the noble Lord, Lord Borwick, has saw the complaints made about an advert um, in, on the December the 3rd when ITV screened um, what was described as an offensive e-cigarette advert during I'm a Celebrity, uh, which appeared to show a woman talking about oral sex uh, when she actually, at the end of the advert... Uh, it was actually a reference to e-cigarettes. And I think, my Lords, uh, complaints have been made. And the point I, I really like to put to the Noble Earl is how do we ensure that e-cigarette manufacturers do n are not able to advertise in such a way that, in fact, it makes the e-cigarette product attractive to young people who would uh, probably perhaps not ordinarily have come to smoking and then as a passport to uh, tobacco smoking uh, in the future. Well, I think if the Nobel Earl can reassure us that regulation can be light touch, if he can reassure us that the um, process of getting regulated as a medicinal product is not going to be overbearing, and if he can assure us that in terms of advertising there can be appropriate controls, then it seems to me, my lords, we should welcome the impact of e-cigarettes because clearly... Uh, the evidence is there that it's helped an awful lot of people come off tobacco smoking. And surely, my lords, at the end of the day, that is a movement to be welcomed. My lords, uh, may I begin by thanking my noble friend, uh, Lord Astor, for securing this important and highly topical debate. Uh, as we've uh, heard... E-cigarettes are nicotine-containing devices that work by atomizing uh, a nicotine solution, which is then breathed in as a vapor by the user. E-cigarettes claim to deliver nicotine to the user without the toxins and carcinogens found in tobacco smoke. E-cigarettes do not involve any combustion, and they do not produce smoke. E-cigarettes are a very recent innovation. They are available in various shapes and sizes, as we've heard, and many are designed to both look and feel like conventional cigarettes. Some even incorporate a light at the end of the device that glows when the product is being used to, to replicate a cigarette. Today, e-cigarettes are marketed as a cheaper and healthier alternative to smoking tobacco. However, e-cigarette manufacturers have avoided making direct suggestions that these products, that their products are smoking cessation aids, as making such claims would subject their products to regulation as a medicine. My Lords, let me turn to the question of whether e-cigarettes are safe to use. When we compare the use of e-cigarettes to smoking of tobacco, then the Department of Health is confidently able to say that e-cigarettes are likely to be much safer to use. That does not mean that e-cigarettes are safe to use. 
It probably says more about how enormously unsafe it is to smoke tobacco. Nevertheless, the safety of e-cigarettes is yet to be fully established. Given how novel these products are, we need to see much more evidence about their safety, especially regarding the use of e-cigarettes over a long period of time. At present, e-cigarettes are sold without any product-specific controls relating to quality and safety in use or specific provisions on advertising and promotion. There are general product safety provisions that apply to these products, but they're not designed for these sorts of products and are not fit for this purpose. We must also keep in mind that nicotine itself is not only highly addictive, it, is, it can be highly toxic. Electronic cigarettes are not risk-free. Known and reported health risks include acute effects on lung function, possible pneumonia, and other risks related to poor product quality. My noble friend Lord Astor made reference to Action on Smoking and Health, ASH. ASH says that there is significant variability in device effectiveness, nicotine delivery, and cartridge nicotine content, both between and sometimes within product brands. ASH cites research that suggests the presence of toxins released in low concentrations from the vaporization process involving certain e-cigarette cartridges. They cite other research that concluded that e-cigarettes have a low toxicity profile, are well tolerated, and are associated only with mild adverse effects. As we've heard during this debate, the e-cigarette market is growing rapidly. More than 300 companies are estimated to be importing or supplying e-cigarettes in the United Kingdom. The e-cigarette market in the UK is estimated to be worth in excess of £100 million. And we know that across the world, the tobacco industry is becoming increasingly involved. There's little doubt that awareness of e-cigarettes has increased quickly through advertising and promotion of these products. It's been said that e-cigarettes are being promoted in similar ways to how cigarettes were promoted before we introduced a comprehensive ban on tobacco advertising in this country. I'm sure I'm not alone in noticing the vast amount of promotion for e-cigarettes in my local convenience store or the representative of e-cigarette companies in shopping malls or outside train stations promoting their products. The University College London Smoking Toolkit Study is a national study of smoking and smoking cessation in England. The most recent data from the survey suggests that electronic cigarette use by tobacco smokers has increased from around 2% in 2011 to between around 14% um, uh, to, to around 14%, I'm sorry, in August 2013. If this trend were reflected across the UK, it would translate to around 1.4 million smokers who have used electronic cigarettes. There's, le there's little evidence to suggest that non-smokers are becoming attracted to using e-cigarettes. Uh, my noble friend uh, Lord Boric asked about the behaviour of, of children and young people. Ash commissioned research into uh, the use of e-cigarettes by young people and found that in Great Britain in 2013, 95% of 11 to 14 year olds and 90% of 16 to 18 year olds have never used e-cigarettes. Among young people, e-cigarette use appears to be confined to those who've already tried smoking. Nevertheless, we remain concerned that e-cigarettes could quickly become popular with young people, particularly if they continue to be vigorously advertised and promoted. We're also very aware of concerns expressed that e-cigarettes could act as gateway products for young people into smoking, and we'll continue to watch the evidence closely. The government recognised in the Tobacco Control Plan for England that smokers are harmed by the tar and toxins in tobacco smoke, not necessarily by the nicotine to which they're addicted. There's no way of avoiding these deadly toxins if you inhale smoke from burning tobacco. Earlier this year, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence published public health guidance on harm reduction approaches uh, to smoking, and the noble Lord, Lord Hunt asked uh, about this. Um, and I would just uh, say, um, uh, 
um, at this point that NICE recommends the use of licensed medicines only. Uh, the guidance suggests that while the best way to reduce smoking illness and death is to encourage smokers to quit completely, there are other ways of reducing the harm from smoking, even though this may involve the continued use of nicotine. If someone doesn't want to, is not ready to, or is unable to stop smoking in one step, the guidance suggests that the use of licensed nicotine replacement therapies could be of use. Uh, my noble friend Lord Borick asked about the possibility of, a, of, of sponsoring research in this area. We already know quite a lot about the safety profile of nicotine and its use in cutting down and, and quitting. The evidence we have is that these products are mainly used to cut down uh, and quit. Um, and my, my noble friend, uh, Lord, Lord Ridley, called for clearer evidence of effectiveness. Uh, the, the, the problem is that there is not good evidence of effectiveness. Um, these products are not magic bullets, in other words, um, but we, even at this stage, do feel that uh, we want to exploit the potential that we see uh, from them. Um, he referred to uh, aubergines um, as uh, potential medicines. I, I think he would agree with me that uh, people do not eat aubergines in the expectation that that will uh, help them to quit smoking. Uh, but um, clearly, uh, whatever remedy uh, we um, encourage uh, has to be uh, effective um, in, in, in its ability to cut down uh, and quit, uh, quit the habit of smoking. Um, there is potentially a place for e-cigarettes within such harm reduction, uh, a harm reduction approach to public health, but only if they meet the requirements set out in the public health guidance. That is, if they are licensed medicines. And I would expect that the NHS and health professionals would also only recommend the use of e-cigarettes that are licensed uh, as medicines. Uh, my noble friend, uh, Lord Astor, asked whether we envisaged e-cigarettes to be sold on prescription. We want um, effective products to be widely available, not just on prescription, but in general sale outlets such as supermarkets uh, and, and corner shops. Uh, the noble Lord, Lord Hunt asked how much it would cost uh, an e-cigarette manufacturer to get a medicines license. Um, the impact assessment that um, we published estimated the annualised cost to a single UK e-cigarette importer for complying with medicines regulation range um, uh, from £87,000 to £266,000. The reason that I'm, I'm particularly grateful to my noble friend Lord Astor for securing this debate is that it does provide me with the opportunity to explain to your Lordships the action that's underway to regulate e-cigarettes. As the Chief Medical Officer for England has said, um, since more and more people are using e-cigarettes, it is only right that these products are properly regulated to be safe and work effectively. A proposed European Tobacco Products Directive has been, um, has been debated um, during the course of the year. It is now in its final stages of negotiation in Brussels, and I can tell noble lords that no deal has yet been reached in the tobacco products uh, directive discussions, but the government hope that agreement might yet be uh, reached shortly. Um, I can reassure your lordships that the United Kingdom has been active during these negotiations as we believe that the proposed Tobacco Products Directive will benefit public health and help to reduce the number of young people who take up smoking in the UK. From the outset, it was envisaged that e-cigarettes would be regulated within the proposed directive. Protecting and promoting public health has always been our starting point and we want, as I've said, safe and effective nicotine-containing products that can help smokers cut down and quit. The government took the view that proportionate medicines regulation was the way to deliver that objective. But... Can I, uh, ask, I thank my friend, Can I just ask a quick question? Does he consider that e-cigarettes that contain, for example, no nicotine at all, but other um, f flavours, should, can they, could they actually come under the tobacco directive, or indeed should they? My Lords, 
that is probably the hardest question that my noble friend uh, has, has asked me uh, during the course of this debate. And my answer to him is that we would certainly need to give very careful consideration to that question. Uh, uh, and it's a question about products that have the appearance of e-cigarettes but contain uh, no nicotine. And we would need to look at how common these products are or are becoming. And frankly, uh, it, that work has yet to be done, but I'm grateful to him for raising the, the, the issue. Um, I, I, I was uh, speaking about uh, our, our approach to uh, the uh, regulation of, of e-cigarettes uh, and that we felt that proportion, proportionate medicines regulation was the best way forward. Nevertheless, we must consider carefully the views that have been forthcoming, including from the European Parliament, that there are alternative approaches to the regulation of e-cigarettes. Moving forward, uh, the government will want to be satisfied that the directive can deliver the right checks and balances on e-cigarettes. It's important to underscore, uh, my lords, that is, there is a wide consensus across the European Commission, the European Parliament, and the European Member States that additional regulatory safeguards are needed for this re relatively new category of product, and we are listening carefully to the genuine debate about how best to take this forward in the directive. There's also emerging consensus that the advertising of e-cigarettes needs to be controlled. Options for doing so as part of the proposed European directive are under negotiation. In addition, the committees of advertising practice, which write and maintain the UK advertising codes that are then administered by the Advertising Standards Authority, announced in October that they intend to develop new rules to give clarity to advertisers and ensure e-cigarettes are promoted responsibly. They're considering running a public consultation on this issue early in the new year. The government's priority during negotiations is to secure a directive that will reduce as far as possible how attractive e-cigarettes are to young people and to closely monitor the development of this market. When the directive has been settled, we will undertake an analysis to consider whether there is further action that could be taken on a domestic basis, in particular to protect young people from e-cigarettes that contain a nicotine. We also need to give further consideration to my uh, noble friend's um, uh, uh, question about non-nicotine containing products, as I've mentioned. Um, regardless of how e-cigarettes are regulated within the proposed directive, we will still encourage the manufacturers of these products voluntarily to seek medicines licenses for their e-cigarettes so that they can be made available to support smokers to quit in the same way as other forms of nicotine replacement therapy uh, do, such as gum and patches. These e-cigarettes could be recommended for use in reducing harm in accordance with the recently published public health guidelines. Before the Noble Lord the Minister sits down, could I um, ask him uh, if, if he has taken on board the point about the risk uh, that exists from regulation stifling innovation, which was raised by both myself and the Noble Lord Lord Hunt, uh, and the risk that if by stifling innovation and by slowing down the, the, the rate of take-up of these things, that actually regulation could kill more people by preventing them from coming off, off tobacco cigarettes. Um, I most certainly have taken that point on board, and I'm grateful to, to my noble friend. Um, um, I, I hope he will take some encouragement from what I said about our wish to see um, take-up of effective products, um, but we need to be cautious, do we not, uh, about allowing um, products that purport uh, to contain certain um, quantities of nicotine and to deliver them in a safe way but in fact do not, to, uh, to flood the market. So I think uh, we do need to look at the safety and, and efficacy of these products as, uh, as particularly important. And there you go. That was what happened in the Lords over the last couple of days. Now, you'll have heard what the noble Lord Minister of Health, Lord Howe, had to say. That's what we're up against. That's what we've got to educate against. But I know chat's been uh, quite voluble during the course of that. Sav? <laughs> there is not a lot I can read out from chat. And some people even manage to find words that we haven't covered in our the swear filter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'll read out what I have got. And uh, Crossbow said, I'll work 
bear in mind what the comments I've got have gone from the beginning of the video all the way down to the end, so right. you kind of have to guess who they were about some of the time. <laughs> Crossbow said, so much better informed than the bloody UK Parliament. Mm -hmm. Midge Dog has said, this is quality, well worth the listen. Andy Bell says, what they don't get for whatever reason is that if they actually stop the production of cigarettes and put the alternative electronic cigarette on the market, deaths would be negligible. Mm -hmm. Cerulean C says, if you ever doubted that Twitter is being watched, there is your proof. Formigo has said, these guys grasp it almost completely. Wow, I am amazed. Even, even the Labour guys. Mm. Chan has said, the MHRA guys in the background are looking awfully worried. Shrinking Mark, by the second. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mark Shaw says, these words are all well and good, but what influence on the final outcome can this lot have? A lot. LVD said, send this bloke to Brussels. That was about Viscount Ridley. Um, Gavin Jones says, can I have a refillable aubergine, please? <laughs> Meteor, you said, these words make brilliant sense. And... I'm not sure who that was from, but he says, this guy is completely and utterly bang on. Then we've got, um, this was regarding a little bit about the VIP advert. It was offensive just because it was offensive. Nothing to do with the fact that it was related to E6. Well, exactly right. I mean, and if I can just dive in at that point, it could have been about lollipops. It could have been about anything. It could have been about biscuits, for God's sake. It was, and, and you've always got to remember, offences taken, not given. That doesn't excuse what they did, because it offended some of my closest friends. And actually, I only got steak one night because of that. Back to you, <laughs> Um Again, I'm sorry, I've cut off half the names on these. The chat was moving so fast. But um, it says, if they say you can go from an e-cig to smoking, they're admitting all the warnings, picks, plain packaging, and the whole TC doesn't bloody work too bloody right gary dibley says bugger me my wife's cooking causes more damage than eight six <laughs> <laughs> you know that steak we were on about gary <laughs> i take it she's not watching uh, you you better hope not or he's a dead man after that <laughs> sorry gary <laughs> um again i've got do they care about our lives nope they just want a slice of the cash Super 7 says, control, control, oh, and control. And Trelenta says, um, you can't advertise according to this, the EU proposition at all. In fact, you would, not be, you would not be allowed to have this feckin' debate as it would be against the law. That is, that is exactly right, but you will have heard from both sides of the House, um, from Lord Hunt and the, all of the, the, the people on the, the, uh, the Tory side, almost all of them anyway, were all saying, hey, if you, know, if you can't advertise them, how the hell are people going to know about them? But this is all part of the message that we've got to look at. Um, this is all part of what I hope we've got in mind for January the 11th at 11 o'clock outside every BBC station, radio or television nationally and everyone across Europe. I, I've, we've been sitting here chatting a little bit while that video was playing and that is such a sterlingly brilliant idea. I should also say, well Dave you know, this, this thread started on UKV? That has, yes. Uh, uh, some ideas coming in on the kind of actions that people could take uh, and I've lost it now. But there was, <laughs> I promise. The, 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 fact of, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, I think, and I think this will be echoed by my colleagues here, the community of vapors throughout the EU has the power. I, I honestly believe that knowledge and passion makes power. You have knowledge, you have passion. You have the power and now is the time to exercise it and I know you will and I think it's amazing. I think the response that we're seeing from people is absolutely amazing and I really, really, really look forward to the 11th of January and seeing all of these TV stations across Europe wondering what the blue buggery is going on and having to report it. I think it's fabulous and that's probably not a bad place to pull this evening's proceedings to a close because Kat is going to give me a right kicking for overrunning tonight but before I go 
as ever, chat always has the last word. Sav, it's over to you. <laughs> I haven't got a single one thing from chat, but I'm actually going to take the last word and give it to chat. I just want to say they have been absolutely amazing tonight. And the ideas that have been coming from them and the support they've been given, not just to us, but to each other, has been just phenomenal to watch them. I've been engrossed in watching them tonight rather than pulling some of their comments out. So, plus one to chat, they've been awesome. Absolutely brilliant. Dave, can I say a big thank you? It's not often I get the chance to bring you in on a Wednesday night because you're normally in, in Switzerland. I am normally in Switzerland, but I'm here tonight and I'm here for the next few weeks. Woohoo! Imagine next week's Christmas Day, isn't it? Yeah, even I'm not doing anything on Christmas Day. I'm sorry, I love you all, but no. Um, I, I have a grandson who actually understands toys now. It'll just be the half hour next week then. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Something along those lines. Um, yeah, you'll be playing with cardboard boxes while I'm sitting, draining the last of the festive spirits down my neck. Uh, I will, however, be back tomorrow night. I've got no idea what we're going to do. It'll be quite festive, I would think. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. And until we all see you from Dave, Sav and myself, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and do what needs to be done. See you later. Bye.